What's going on guys? Welcome back. My name is Brandon and today we've got a quick aluminum fabrication project to do. Stick around. This is what we're working on today guys and this is pretty incredible. Now the customer that brought this to me does something professional with pedal bikes. This is what's called a warm-up stand for these pedal bikes. There's some event that he's going to and I guess a lot of people use these and you actually put a pedal bike on this rig so your back tire would like sit here and then your front tire sits on the top of this area right here and you can see it's got little adjustable positions where you can move this um, roller forwards or backwards so the front tire of your pedal bike sits right on this and you literally pedal your pedal bike on top of this stationary. And I asked, how does that work? How would you keep your balance on that? Well, I guess that's the magic of this like little rubber band piece right here. So as you're pedaling, that's turning this roller here, which is turning and rotating this roller up here and by that roller spinning your front tire it creates like a gyroscopic effect and it keeps you upright I guess on your pedal bike I would actually try this and show you guys how it works if I didn't think I'd kill myself or destroy this piece of equipment but uh, <laughs> the issue that they're having with this guys is that he said over the years the bicycles have gotten a lot longer in length so this machine is no longer working so you can see they've already got it all the way on the last adjustment right now and they need to be able to go out even further for longer bicycles so what we're gonna do and I've already started taking this apart is we've got to add some distance to this piece this actually folds up this whole uh, rig will fold up on itself so it's a compact unit so this is what it looks like all folded up it's compact it's super light it's made of lightweight aluminum so that's what we're gonna have to replace this with and what he wants to do is add 90 millimeters of length to this piece right here and by making this piece longer that will put this out 90 millimeters more and then he'll still have all these adjustments that he can do back here. Granted, these numbers won't be significant to the actual length. I assume this is probably like length from here to back there, but they'll all be equal distance if we make a duplicate of this piece that's 90 millimeters longer. Well, let's get some measurements on this and see what we're dealing with. So you can see for fabrication, we got a little uh, notch here that we got to cut out of it. And then this piece fits in just like that. So we'll have a couple holes that we got to drill in it and we can use this as a template. Then on the other side, it's just a straight cut with a hole in it. And then this piece fits in it. And again, like I said, this stand all folds up so it's nice and compact. So using a set of calipers, we'll zero it out. And we'll get a measurement this way. So that's 19.73. Point seven three roughly so that's 20 millimeters that way 29.7 so that's 30 millimeters that way so we're looking at 20 by 30 by 1.45 so that's going to be 1.5 millimeter so I'm gonna have to order a piece of this 30 by 20 by 1.5 and Overall, these are going to be less than two foot a piece for each one of these. So this leg will be, you know, two feet, two feet. So there's four feet and we need to do two of these stands. So what I'll do is I'll look online. I will get them to cut. I think it's a 10 foot length. I'll get them to cut that in half. They can ship me two five foot pieces. Then I won't have an over length charge for UPS and I'll have just a little bit left over. So that'll work perfect. So a 10 foot length will do 
two of these setups. Let me go uh, put it together, get it priced out, call my customer, see if they're interested in doing it, and then I will get back to you. I got a price for the material. I spoke with the customer. They said, go ahead and do it. So I've got it on order, and I'm gonna show you right now what I quoted the customer, and then when we come back, it'll have been like two or three days because the material's coming in from Ohio, and then we'll get to fabricating on this. A 10-foot piece of that aluminum rectangle tube is $126. Cut into two five-foot pieces is $54.20 shipped to my door by UPS. I'm charging the customer $80 in labor. So his grand total will be $260.20. If you wanted to, you could tack on like 20% onto your material total. You could put on a little bit of a handling charge if you wanted to. And obviously you're flexible on how much time you're going to charge your customer for labor. Uh, this is my going rate for an hour. I should be able to get this done within an hour. And if I don't, well, no big deal. I didn't put any markup on it and I didn't charge any additional labor and I won't charge them any additional labor because if this turns out to be more work for me, that'd be great. And this would be, you know, excellent little niche to get into. I'd be helping them out and they would be helping me out. You know, I'm looking to make a little bit of money, but I'm not looking to retire off the guy. So hopefully this will work out well for everyone. And just like this guys, new material is here in the shop, all ready to be built. You can see one of the ends is a little beat up, but let's take a quick look at it and I'll show it to you. It's an exact match for the material that we had, like identical. That's what we were hoping for. You can see that's perfect that way. Let's stand it up on edge. You can see that's perfect that way. And the material also had to be the same wall thickness as this because we're reusing these pieces. And you can see these fit in there perfectly just like that. So now what we got to do is we're going to clean up the ends, cut these back just a little bit to give us a nice square edge, and then we're going to start using these pieces as templates, and we're going to make this new one 90 millimeters longer than that. To make these cuts, I'm going to be using my Evolution S355 MCS saw. This is a dual bevel miter saw. I use this thing all the time. Currently I'm using a metal blade in it, uh, but you don't have to. They do make an aluminum blade. You'll get a little bit more life out of it, but you can use the metal tipped blade on aluminum. You just need to make sure you don't do it the other way around and use the aluminum blade to cut metal. So what I'm going to do is flush this up both of them. We're going to cut them both at the same time. These are super loud, so you're going to want to have on hearing protection and eye protection. Now while this is still clamped in the saw, I'm going to lay this piece on it, just like that, flush up that side, and I'm going to measure back 90 more millimeters. So I've set the tool at 90 millimeters. I'm going to hold this right here on the edge, make it make contact, and I'm going to put a little scribe line just like that. This mark is now 90 millimeters longer than the original tube. Now I'm still clamped right here and I need to cut it right here. So once I cut this, then these two pieces are going to be freed on this side of this line. So I want to keep these held together so I don't have to keep redoing this because then I can use these as my template on this side. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over on this side and put a clamp on this to hold these two together so once it's cut back there, these will still be held tightly together. Now we can undo these clamps here. Slide this ahead. We need to make sure that this cut right here is on this side of the blade because this is the piece we want to keep right here. Now these two are 90 millimeters longer than the originals. It's still clamped in the saw. We can flush them up on this side and put a scribe mark on this side. All right, cut it off again. Then we're going to have to put this little notch on the end and then these two holes. So we're going to use this as a template. I've already found out which size drill bit fits this, and that's this one right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to back off this clamp right here, stick this in, and I'm going to flush this up to all of these just like that. Then 
clamp it in place. And I'm going to put another clamp on it right back here to help hold all of this stuff together. Now I can drill all of this all at once. If you guys haven't seen how I built this mag drill base and stand, you should go check it out. I paid $35 for this, which was once a drill press. And I picked it up on Marketplace. It was all clapped out. I cut the head of it off because it was junk, welded on this plate, and now I use it for my mag drill. And it is super handy because now I have a drill press stand that can run annular cutters. And when I'm not using it as a drill press, I can just take it off the stand, walk away with it, and use it like a regular mag drill. Super handy. Now I've just spun it around, flushed up this side so we can do the single hole. Now I'm just going to clean up the edges a little bit with a file. Just take off any burrs, things that might not feel good if somebody touches it. I've said this before that if something feels good to the hands, and it looks good to the eyes, people assume it's probably good. To cut this little slot in this piece right here, I've actually made like a little jig. So this one right here is a stop that allows this to only go in so far. And then this one right here is a guide to help line it up so that it's on center. And what I'm going to do is just slowly bore down through this until it makes a straight line just like this and I tested it on a little scrap piece and it absolutely worked great I'll show you this little piece right here just fits in just like that can't ask for any better and clean it up the rest away with a file. All right, so let's assemble one of them and try it out. And I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna leave this natural aluminum color. That way, if my customer decides to want to uh, powder coat it, he can get it powder coated. I'm just concerned that uh, he has these in time for his event. So you can see how great everything is fitting, guys. These little bushings keep this tube from crushing down. You can see how it's a nice tight fit in there. That goes down like that. And that lines up perfect like that. Pop that off that one, put it into the longer one. Do the same thing on the other side. There, all right, it is now 90 millimeters longer than it was when we received them. Let's get them down on the floor, see how it works. Wish I had a bicycle, I could try this out. I actually do have a bicycle, I could try it out, but I don't I don't dare to try it out on this. You know, my luck, I'd break my neck or bust this thing and then they won't have it for their event, but you can see how it works. Got a little foot there and there, another little foot there, and another one there. Pretty slick. I'll call up my customer and tell him he can uh, come get it. It's all ready for his event. This is what it looks like all folded up. Just kind of wanted you guys to see the fit and finish. How oh, this looks, it looks factory. It doesn't even look like we did anything to it other than this being a natural aluminum color. I mean, it looks perfect. So he might even elect to not have this powder coated. He might just leave it like it is. And like I said, he's got another set to make a whole another one of these if he wants to. 
And that's all there is to it. Just a real simple project, guys. For you guys that are just starting out and looking to get into welding and fabrication, this is like a perfect job. Not a whole lot of liability. Fairly simple to do. You can get your name out there, and it's kind of in a specialized niche. So if people know that you're capable of doing it, you may be targeting like a special group that could help your business grow. So just something to think about when you're starting out or you're trying to establish yourself. New videos every Friday. Until next week, guys, I will see you then. Take care, stay safe, and God bless. Like, comment, subscribe, and share. See you next week.